Ehas Club presents Stories to Create Podcast, where the tale of our guest takes you back, way back to where the story first got created. Now, to help create this new story, here is your host, Cornell Bunting. Yes, yes. Welcome to another episode of Stories to Create Podcast right here at EAS Club. I am so excited. We got a big show today. We got an innovator in the house. I'm telling you, she is making moves, people. I'm so excited. Listen, you know, without further ado, help me welcome Miss Erica. How do you say it? Agusti? Agutis. Agutis. Mm-hmm. Look at that name right there, just like. Gutus. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Man, listen, we're excited to have you on the show. You're supposed to have been on the show. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know when you're making a lot of money and you're just so busy, you're like, let's put it off to this. Let's put it up. Is that what you did? Big money, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This is good. So on our show, what we do, we take our listeners back with the guests. And so our listeners want to know who you are sure. before the innovator, the, sure. the big bad creator, all these beautiful things started. Like, you know, when you discover what you wanted to do. So take us back to like, you know, born, grew up, sure. what that looked like. Let's take the face off, the other face. <laughs> see my beautiful eyes. You see her beautiful eyes? Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I was born and raised here in Florida, believe it oh, or not. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And my, my father was a, a police officer in, okay. in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Oh. And my mom was a homemaker. Okay. I'm the oldest of five. What? Yeah, oldest of five. So big sister. Yes. So Lauren wow. is wow. the youngest. Okay. Lauren, yes. That owns Southern Charm. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see, what can I tell you? So, <laughs> you know, back in, in the day, when yeah. my father was a police officer, um, you know, he patrolled where he lived. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, not so much, right? right, right so right. everyone knew my father. Okay. So it kind of molded, you know, um, my, my, your upbringing, my upbringings, right? Okay. So I could, I, I had to, by default, just be a good girl. Oh, <laughs> plus I was the oldest of five. Did that irritate you that you had to be a good girl because dad's a cop? Uh, you know, he never had to say it like with actual oh. words. He's okay. old school, so just okay. the look you knew. Wow, you're out of line. So dad gave you the look, shut everything down. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so you guys went to public school or private school? A public school. Wow. We didn't have money for private school. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <Yes>. But- <laughs> Yeah, That's okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> listen, most of us out here went to public school. So, right. you know, we, we, we get that. So you grew up in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. Wow. Yes, in Parkland. Parkland? Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, not Parkland. What am I saying? That was par- Parkway. Parkway. Right across okay. from the swap shop. Oh, okay. Okay. The there time. you go. Yep. Okay. So going to school there, like, because we're talking... What's that, early 80s? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yes. how was the crime at that time? It was it was okay or it wasn't as bad as now? I, I personally think that um, the crime was bad, okay. not worse than it is now. Right. Because I think that we all kind of kept it internal. Right? Okay, okay. So, okay. you know, um, but yeah, it, it was it was you know according to my dad. So my mm-hmm. dad kind of shielded us from his day to day, you right. know, um, um, arrest and things yeah. like that yeah. until he got really close to home. So in middle wow. school, he actually was a part of SWAT. So in middle oh. school, he arrested um, someone in our neighborhood. What? And the young lady, uh, the sister of the gentleman that was arrested, um, went to middle school with me. Oh. Yep. And so she, you was, yeah, and she targeted like me, and she she assaulted me. Oh no! Out of nowhere, yeah, it was tough. Wow, like she was telling you, tell your dad to grip my brother out. 
No, she because apparently her mom, the, her mother was uh-huh. you know screaming and yelling, oh. and got really emotional with the police officers when they were arresting her brother. I and see. so my dad warned her a few times, right? And ultimately, yeah. the mom got arrested. Too. Oh man! So she was not happy. Oh man! You know, you, so. your family was not in good light with the community. I, well, you know, uh, you know, I, I would say fast forward ten years later, there yeah. would p- be people that would come to our house yeah. and and want to talk to my dad and mm-hmm. thank him for okay. intervening in their life. So, yeah. you know, but and in that initial phase when I was yeah. in like middle school, yeah. early years of high school, not so much. Oh man! Now, what was the relationship like with you and your siblings? Oh, we had a, a good relationship. Yeah. I would say, you know, um, not too much fight. I think the brothers probably. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, the brothers perhaps more, but the sisters, we we had a three bedroom, and yeah. as I said, it was seven of us. So, wow. all the girls had a bedroom. Okay. So, there was myself and my, my two sisters, and uh-huh. we're nine and well, eight and nine years apart. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, we, we so made you, it work. So, you guys understood what it's like to live in a third world country then? Because, you know, a third world country, we got a one bedroom with like nine people, and everyone's sleeping on the same bed. It was tough. Yeah. It was tough, but it made us, I think, stronger and yeah. um, rely on each other. That's you know? beautiful. Well, when did you when did you move to this side of Florida? Oh, only eight years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So most of most of your growing up is Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. So I grew up, born and raised Fort Lauderdale, and then once I got married, my husband and I moved to Palm Beach. Oh, okay. And um, and then ultimately here. We really wanted to kind of slow things down. Yeah. yeah. Now, what was your first choice of uh, career when you <laughs> when you left school? Because you, so you did high school, you did college. I did not go to college. Okay, so you, high school, and then you went right into the work world. Yeah. So um, my plan was after high school was to go to college, right? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, I got into a horrible car accident oh, man. that summer, right after I graduated high school. Um, yeah. It was it was tough, so I had to have plastic surgery on my face, oh, okay. and um, it really set me back. Right, right. So yeah. um, my path changed. Okay. I always felt like you know I knew what my path was going to be. I was mm-hmm. going to go to college and then have a huge family. Right, right. right. Um, unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. That yeah. way. Right. But looking back, it. It's, it's fine. It's you know? okay. Yeah, yeah. So I went to high school, um, did a little college at the community college, right? Okay. okay. And then okay. ultimately started working for Motorola in, in okay. Fort Lauderdale. Oh, ah, doing the phones. Yes, yes. Flip phones. Yep. Well, actually, it was the Nextel phones, you know, the ones that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, had, I had a Nextel phone. <laughs> <laughs> we know what a Nextel phone is about. That's right. That's right. Uh, so, so then you were done with that. You went more into corporate America. Or what was that? Yeah, journey? so I so I started out in the factory. Okay. And worked my way up to like you know um, a marketing role. Okay. And um, I worked there until they you know started to lay folks off. Right. Mm-hmm. They go through that that transition, and then I landed my next corporate job at Office Depot headquarters in Boulder. Okay. 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 And again, marketing, right? Yeah. And uh, finally, um, a manager gave me an opportunity in sales. Wow! And once I, I uh, started sales, I really found my yeah uh, found success. Would you say sales position is better than marketing positions? Oh, uh, for me, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow, because you're doing a lot of research when it comes to the. Yeah, so I'm one of those people that um, if I believe in the product, mm-hmm. I can sell it. Okay. Right. So with Office Depot, I believed in you know our customer service and things like that and our products. So it was yeah. very easy for me to sell because I love to talk to people. I love to kind of know what their vision is. So it wasn't just, oh, buy this. Right? Yeah. So I, I got to get your take on this because I, you know, I did something and I know my agent were a little bit mad at me. So let's say you're getting a certain amount of money. Let's, let's put five grand on it. And you're supposed to advertise this product. And this product is terrible. Would you advertise the product? No. <laughs> no. Not me personally. Yeah. See? See? It's okay. I, I didn't advertise. The product was terrible. I'm like, I, guys, you're going to let people be mad at me for doing this commercial, all excited about this product, and this product was, it was terrible, people. What type of product was it? Well, now I'm curious. <laughs> what kind of product was it? It was a cleaning product. Oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a cleaning product. Don't worry, guys. I won't put you guys' brand out there. So, but um, yeah, I didn't do it. Um, so you 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 did you finish high school. You decided a little bit of college, mm-hmm. but you you got serious in the work world, and then you kind of start getting into that mom role. At what point did that unfold after you got married? How long? Yeah. So it, it was about four years. Yeah. Four years in. So I come from a long line of, of women having, you know, as I said, my mom had five, five children. Right. Um, all of my aunts and uncles had at least five. Wow. And my grandmother had 11 children. Okay. And so, you know, I, I, I get pregnant with um, K2. Okay. And, um, you know, we had some, the pregnancy was going well. And right. then, you know, I had I ended up delivering him at 20, 25 weeks. Wow. Okay. So he's early, early it was, born. Yeah. Early preemie, Premature, yeah. micro preemie, one pound, 10 ounces. Wow. Okay. And it was challenging because none of the women in my family experienced that. Or right. if they did, they didn't express it, right? Because right, they didn't right. talk about it. So, yeah. So that brought some challenges for you. Absolutely. It was a, I, I want to say, not that the marriage was perfect, but it was good. Like, right. I think life you know, after the car accident, you yeah. know, once I found my groove in corporate America, mm-hmm. you know, it was kind of not easy, but right. it was, didn't have major challenges. And that was the first major challenge that Kevin and I had to experience. Okay. So you guys had many a discussions where you had to kind of talk through it to see sure. the best approach. Yeah. Uh, Kevin was in the uh, um, NICU for 90 days. Wow. 90 days. Well, he's now out and strong and moving around, isn't he? Yes, he is. So how many kids you have now? I have two children. Two children. This is beautiful. Do you got a balance or it's two boys? Two boys. Two boys. She did not get a balance. See, I feel good now because I never got a girl, people. I got four boys. So what what was that like, though? Because, you you know, you're in a house with three men. Yes. Yes. So I always, um, with each pregnancy, I thought I was having a girl because I'm thinking, okay, okay, I'm going to have a girl so I can do all the mom and daughter stuff. Yeah. No. So um, it's different. Like I, I, my husband is definitely a man's man. You know, Uh he's unapologetically, you know, a man. Right. So the boys, they want to do all the stuff. Sorry, Kevin. I'm just going to say it. They want to (laughs) burp. They want to pass gas and do all this stuff. So as the only woman in the group, I feel like responsible to right. explain to them, okay, when you're dating, you can't do that. Right. Because they don't, they, they don't know unless you right. tell them. Right? Yeah, they yeah, think yeah. it's funny. They think it's cool mm-hmm. and obnoxious. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, girls don't. So I'm constantly saying, okay, girls will, will not like that yeah. when they're doing that, things. that. That's so true. that's how I try and balance it. But I have to say, if I'm not feeling well, yeah. they all come and like take care of me. Good. Make so your soup and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're there sweet when it comes to me not feeling well. That's amazing. Yeah. So they're caring men. They just on the manly side mm-hmm. too much. Huh? For sure. Just, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we're putting it out there. <laughs> that is awesome. So you you you're in the the corporate world. Your mom, wife, you figured out the balance, or not really? You know. Um. So with. Working in sales, I was going so hard, right mm-hmm. now, to the point that I, I actually got sick and landed in the hospital. I, I mean, I was like number one in sales, you know, my first year out, and I didn't know how to turn it off. I didn't have that balance. Oh, no. So I would work as much as I could, yeah. right? Because as a salesperson, if your phone rings and you don't answer, that's a potential lost sale, right? right, right so right. I was working that 100%. Oh. And, then, um, and then, you know... There was no room for anything else. Wow. So then I said, okay, I got to figure out the balance. So then I started, you know, taking care of, you know, my homely duties as well, Mm -hmm. you know, cooking, Mm -hmm. cleaning, and uh, quickly realized I got to figure this out. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. So, um, yeah, now I have the balance. Like 12 years later, I I think I figured it out to some degree. You know, for listeners that's, you know, trying to understand the steps because you, you can't really skip a step. To really be uh, effective Mm -hmm. in in an area like that where you got all that stuff going on, you're driven with the the money that's coming in, but also now taking a break and identifying where you're needed and and what that looked like. For you, would you say going to hospital was the, the, the big turnaround where you kind of figured out, okay, I need to make some for sure. Yeah. It, it forced me to listen. So my, so my, my husband was, was saying it and I was 
you know, not. You wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. The bread looked too good. It was. I was like, oh, is, is this is this easy? <laughs> I just got to answer my phone <laughs> and plug in some data? Okay. She's like rolling in the bread. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. So, yeah, that was a turning point. I was like, okay, I'm in the hospital. Yeah. I had double pneumonia. What? Yes. What did you mean double? So both lungs were full. Oh, man. Yeah, so I, I I was to the point where I couldn't have a full conversation without, like, you know, catching my breath totally. I see, I see. And so the signs were there, Yeah. and I just kept pushing. Kept you just pushing kept going. Until one night, I, I woke up, and I'm like, something's not right. I yeah. really need to go to the hospital. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm glad you caught it, because we wouldn't be sitting here right now, <laughs> people. <is> true. <laughs> So a, l- a lot of things have evolved um, for you, you know, over the years. When, when did the shift come? Like, when did the shift came where you like, okay, enough for all that stuff. I've made enough money there. Let me, let me do this myself now. Yeah, so this is probably, um, the, it's tough because I didn't go the traditional route. I right. generally don't do anything traditionally. <laughs> so I still have my day job. Okay, okay. So I'm my day job. Yeah. And, you know, some experts say, you know, give up the day job and right. just focus true, you know, on your passion. Right. And I just can't find myself to do that. Right. So I still have my day job. I work for um a utility. Okay. I'm gonna say the name. And in sales. Okay. You know, I have success there. Beautiful. But um it, it it's always been my desire to own my own company. Right. Especially once I started sales, that's when I realized, oh my goodness, I can yeah. do this. I can yeah you know, um, create my own brand. Right, right, right. right. And um, so finally, we got to the point where things aligned yeah. and, and we decided to, to take the Take, take the that leap, huh? Yes, take the leap. Thank you. And and get get the brand out there. So the yeah. brand is out there now. You got some people attention. I mean, you got Southwest Florida attention, I, I would say. I, I, I would agree. So I, I've learned a lot in the last few months. So as I said, you know, I've had success in, in, in different um, positions in corporate America. Mm-hmm. But with my own company, yeah. there's challenges that I didn't expect. Right? Yeah. So it's a social media company. And I didn't realize that other social media brands, when they would launch, they would have, you know, hundreds of people creating content. Right. Right, right, right. Um, just so when folks visit the site or the uh, app, there yeah. will be content for them to interact with. Right. So right. I missed the memo on that. I see. So I'm working towards creating more content so that way today when you guys download the app, you will have some content to view or you can create some. There you go. It's a beautiful thing. So you need creators as well yes. on your uh, platform. Yes. She needs them, people. So we're going to go back, right? So with. You know, you're four four siblings yes. because it's five of you guys. Yes. School school days, like what what was school days like? You know, like getting up, going to school, coming mm-hmm. home. Yeah. So um, my mom, since she was a homemaker, would take us to school most of the time. All right. So she is that what? So when you say homemaker, what what is? I mean, she was mean? she stay stay at home mom. So she's a stay at home mom. Mm-hmm. See, for a lot of us that out there, we don't. Because a stay-at-home mom or housewife. Housewife, yeah. Uh, this is pretty dope, though. Homemaker. So that's a new <laughs> word right there. That's for me anyway. That's a new word for me anyways. Um, so school wasn't too far away from home. Um, not it, well, yeah, it actually was. Because we went to, so initially I went to a school called Nova. Okay. Um, and, um, and then we went to a school called... Uh, Stephen Foster, and it oh. was it was a good distance, but my mom would drive us and pick us okay. up, um, and then from there, yeah, school was pretty much not not super close, not walking distance. Right. It wasn't in the community. That's that's good though. So you had a lot of chores outside of school, or oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and my mom's gonna be like, wait, what? <laughs> but yes, I did. I did. Let me tell you. I was you're telling oldest. our mom over here. She's trying yeah. to tell on you, mom. <laughs> so, so all of you guys would work with each other, though. Yeah. So, well, not work with each other. So, like, I would have a week of dishes, for instance. Bobby, my uh, the second oldest, my brother, yeah. he would n- maybe sweep or mop the floors. Like, okay. every night before we went to bed, the house was spotless. Wow. You know? So, everybody had their chore. Yeah. 
for the week, and they had to they had to do it every day. Wow. Yeah. Did you guys have anything adventurous that was happening back then? Like for me, when I was a kid, we had a rat people. The rat, a rat was a menace. <laughs> but <laughs> what kind of challenge did you guys have? Like, challenge? <clears throat> well, so the neighborhood that we lived in wasn't the best neighborhood. Oh. So um, my mom, she's, a sp- I mean, she's aggressive. Yeah. And she's old school. Ooh. And if she seen some guys hanging out on the corner, she would drive up to, to them and challenge them and say, go home. Oh, wow. You're not selling that in our neighborhood. Okay. So. And it got to the point where she was doing it so often that my my dad stepped in and was like, you can't do that because yeah. these kids are built different now. Right. You know, kind right. of thing. Um, yeah. So we even had a situation where um, there was a high-speed chase throughout mm-hmm. our neighborhood. And the, the guy that um, ran into our backyard, his car just, like, was entered into our backyard. Yeah. Um, and... Destroy some trees and vegetation. Wow. Yeah, and I remember the police being there with their flashlights. It was at night, so you could see the flashlights. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so it wasn't the best. Oh, you know, man. Did anymore. they catch him? Oh, yeah. You know, my dad was going to let. Yeah. Yeah. So I you think guys, it was his personal mission. Yeah, it was you guys got scared, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was scary. And then um, when I was, I think, 12 years old, my dad was shot on the, on the job. What? Yep. Yeah, and that was a big life-changing moment for our family. Yeah. Yeah, so I never really, I thought he was invincible, Mm -hmm. right? The the folks in the community called him RoboCop. Okay. You know, because he lifts weights, he's this big guy. Big dude. Six, six, I think six, three, six, two. Okay. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, and they didn't catch the guy. No. For, For years, I think it took about 20 years before they caught him. Maybe I'm wow. exaggerating. I'm not sure. But my um, uncle, my dad's brother, was also a police officer. Yeah. And when they when they caught him, they brought him in together. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It was a grown man after that, huh? Yeah. So the guy, yeah, he, my dad went on. He did something, I guess, that he wasn't supposed to do. He, This woman called in distress and said some guy was on a roof. And he mm-hmm. went to the call, and he was supposed to wait for backup. And he didn't. Oh, your dad really was trying oh, to be you know what? Like, no. <laughs> I'm like Mr. Steel over here. Yes, yes, yes. I should have oh, a picture, yes. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So he, he got checked. Yeah, so the, the, the gentleman, like, you know, shot him and then threw him in the canal that was behind the house. What do you mean threw him in the canal? Like, threw, he, Yes, threw what? him in the canal. I'm telling you. Yeah. Oh, and my so goodness. he pulled up on the weeds, got out of the canal, and that's how he survived. So the bullet remained in his chest okay. until he passed away a couple of years ago because it was so close to his heart they, they couldn't oh, perform surgery. Oh, they couldn't move it. Yeah. Wow. So he would brag all the time about his muscles stopping the bullet. Okay. The heart. Wow. Big muscles. Yes. Big yes. muscles. Yeah. Oh, man. So so he passed a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he lived a long life, though, yeah? He lived a good life. I mean, he did... What he wanted to do, which okay. he said after the force, he wanted to just sit on sit on his back porch, mm-hmm. smoke his cigars, and drink his yeah, you know, you have go. his drinks. That's good. Okay, okay, okay. Not not bad, not bad. So, with 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 all that that was going on, did did your mom ever like? Did you ever hear your mom arguing with your dad? Like, I think you should leave this type of job and do something different where people are not trying to kill you um you know they they shielded us from the arguments oh i think i only heard the him my dad raise his voice once wow yeah they shielded us which i don't know you know in hindsight that's a good thing because then when you get into a relationship you don't know how to effectively communicate when someone raises their voice because you right. haven't experienced it. Right. So it sounds great and wonderful, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you don't have the skills to really, you know what I mean? Right. So you you do that, you know, in your relationship, you shield the kids from? No. Okay. No. You I try to me. find a balance. I'm, I'm hope, I hope I'm doing a good job, but yeah. yeah, no, I don't shield them. That's good. You you have those conversations and you tell them the importance of being honest right. in the conversation. I, I like that. I, I mean, I know there is a lot of relationships where it's important. Well, f- first of all, before I even say anything on that, what would you say to someone that's in a 
toxic relationship, but they have reasons to stay in the relationship, even though it's toxic. I think um, it's important to evaluate Mm -hmm. if it's worth it. So if you're staying in a toxic relationship, for example, for your children, right? I don't think just on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good idea because then they grow up thinking that's the norm. That's the benchmark for relationships. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I like that. Even if you don't say, even if you say, okay, this isn't the perfect marriage. When you get married, do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. What they see is going to be their benchmark. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way you put that. Even though, I mean, we're moving into a world where it almost seemed like that's a cool thing. They they make videos at I tell you, the world we're going into today, people, yeah. serious. Mm-hmm. So, with you now develop this business mind, and um, have you got a chance to go out and network with like minded individuals that will help you to evolve? No, um, I would say not as much as I would like to. Okay. All right. Um, there's not a lot of women in the tech space, right. number one, and then right. there's not a large number of like people of color in the, right. in the tech space. Yeah. Um, I did attend a conference in New York last year mm-hmm. where I was blown away. It's called Black Women in Tech. Okay. Um, and it was in um, Brooklyn, New York, mm-hmm. and it, the room was full of men and women, but mostly women. I would say 90% women that are doing great and awesome and innovative things with tech. Right. So um, that was the one space that I felt like I'm going home. I found my people. Yeah. Right? But it's in New York. So okay. they have all, all these fabulous events, but I just can't. You know, so I wish that we had that. Here. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, never know. Maybe we'll make some improvements. Okay. We might make some improvements. It's a beautiful thing. What about church? Did you ever go to church growing oh, up? Every day, every time the door is open. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know you, some people say they go to church four times a week, three times a week. How many times a week you had to go to church? Oh, my goodness. Church? Let me think. So we had church morning service, um, and then we would go for uh, choir rehearsal. Okay. And then I think Wednesday night Bible study. But that was the Bible study was more for the adults, but we were there. You know what okay. I mean? Okay, <laughs> right, right. Um, so I would say probably four times wow. a week. Four times when a week. When I was younger, yes. That's dedicated up. right now. Oh, yeah. You, did you continue that with the kids? Yeah, uh, I recently started back. So it was challenging to find a church here. Okay. You okay. know, so we, we found a church that we like. Yeah. And that's balanced. You know, my husband, you know, has his, the you know, what he wants the, the church. Ah, the, culture to be like right right, and i'm more traditional i want the singing and uh you know yeah so we had to find you know a church that a church that was in the middle oh he couldn't handle that revival stuff no i i I mean he would do do it if i asked him to but you could tell it was just like a lot yeah (laughs) you're not used to that okay what is all those movements (laughs) going i gotta tell you there is a video out right now and i'm sure a lot of you guys seen it where they have a room full of white people going crazy in the church. I saw it. Got the feet going. My dude's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my goodness. So they they capable. They this, are this capable. Is true. This is true. So, <laughs> so you're in like a non denomination space. I think so, yes. Okay. Yeah. What is that relationship now with your mom? Because she's still around, yeah? Yes, yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Is, is she here or is she still in Fort Lauderdale? She Lander? lives in Lehigh. In Lehigh? Yes, wow. sir. Wow. Yeah. Oh, every yeah. now and then you go cook for her? No. Uh, no, no. She the cooking cook would well. be for, you know, my sister. Um, no, my mom is uh, super independent. Okay. She is not the traditional grandmother. She is planning her next, like, cocktail time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Are you saying you can't call mom be like, mom, can you watch the boys for me? I think I have to give like a two week notice. And then I still, I gotta be real nice, butter it up, kiss it, throw some sugar on there. You can't pop up on mom for nothing. Uh, I mean, if it's a true emergency, yeah. she's there 100%. Okay. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if it's like, oh, me and Kevin are going out to dinner, you want to come on. That's not happening. 
<laughs> well, I'm like, no. <laughs> no, and she's beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. But she is spicy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> Will you say she got filter out her mouth sometime or not? No, really? no filter. No. Oh. She sleeps very well at night. She gets it all out. <laughs> well, sleep like a baby. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I envy her because I sugarcoat things. Yeah. You know, and I walk away thinking, oh, maybe I should have said it this way. My mom, she says it, and Just, then she's done. That's it. Listen, it's out there. You can't take it back. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah, I envy it. Wow. <laughs> you, <laughs> one of these days, you should go to mom like, mom, teach me. <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me, Carnell, because she just. <laughs> she go hard. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. She will. But she'll do things for, for strangers. I mean, she's yeah. a good person. Don't get me wrong. But right. she's going to tell you how she feels. It's not going to be a mystery. Yeah. So with with that spicy of a woman, she, did she ever beat you guys back in the day? No. So okay. my dad, that was kind of my dad's uh, responsibility. He, had a, he um, has many talents. So he carved out a, 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 a piece of wood, a paddle. Right. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's that was a whipping. Oh yeah! Wow. So, so even if you guys did something bad when Dad was at work, Mom put that on the paper and be like, "Okay, Dad's gonna deal with this when he gets home." Excuse me. Yeah, she would say, "I'm, I'm gonna tell your dad," and okay. we knew that terrified us. Wow. Because it was, you know, we were brought up like really old school in that, yeah. in that sense. You were scared of your dad. You had Fair. no way to persuade Mom and say, "Mom." You really don't have to do this today. You don't have to tell them. We didn't talk back. It was just a different oh, time. That's right. You know? That There's is no, right. You can't even think. If you walk away and breathe too hard, wow. you're in trouble. That's it. Yep. Like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you throwing temper tantrums <laughs> on? Be on you the know, floor. <laughs> Get knocked out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness! So your your siblings, they're all here as well in South Florida. Uh, no, so my brother Bobby right now is in Atlanta, Georgia, but everybody else is in South Florida. Everyone, everyone yeah. else is here, and you, because your younger sister has the the restaurant. Yes, Listen, Southern people, Charm Bistro. Southern Charm people, it's amazing, amazing. Coming for a free meal just for doing this commercial just now. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> just played. I'm just played. It's a beautiful thing. Now, it, you recently had like uh, an opportunity to go into some space locally mm-hmm. where you got individuals familiar with your work and what you're doing right now and what that look like. What are some of the the, the takes that you get back, the, the inputs, the feedbacks? Yeah, so um, in my, this is my personal experience, experience. Um, right. I would say people are kind of surprised okay. that I created an app. Okay. And it's challenging for them to kind of like reconcile. Ah, they're right? not trying so, to grasp it yet. I, I don't know. It's like, okay, you, you created something like Facebook right. or TikTok or Twitter. And... I think they discredit that it could be done. Right. You know, with such a small budget by right. someone they know. Right, right. Um, so I don't I don't get that. Like, I feel like, you know, my sister Lauren, she creates a great product. Mm-hmm. You know, she serves delicious entrees. Mm-hmm. And people will try a restaurant. Right, right. right. And when you're doing something new and different, it yeah. seems as though people, you know, um, aren't, I mean, they're excited. Don't get me wrong. Right, it's well right. received. Right. They download. I have a lots of downloads of the yeah, app, but it's yeah. the actual using it day to day. Yeah. I think I probably have to do a better job of um, explaining how to use it how to use and it when and to like. use it. Okay. So you probably need to get more active on like TikTok or something. I do. Because they said TikTok's a thing now. It is. It's, we, it's great. We old school got to get with the program. Yeah, I fought it for a long time. I'm like, I'm not getting on TikTok. Yeah. And now I really enjoy it. You, you're you doing it now. Yes. I, I still haven't started. figured out TikTok. I make videos, but I still haven't figured out it. Not even Twitter. I'm not I, a fan of Twitter. I will not figure out. I've only figured out Facebook and Instagram. That's that's as much as I go. But I'm, I'm in the other spaces. But So for you right now, you, you're liking where you're at, right? Yes, I do like where I am. Um, mm-hmm. As I said, I just need to focus more on the marketing mm-hmm. and 
and increasing my my followers and users of that. Yeah, you know that's beautiful. Now, your boys do they are they in sports or what, what's going on in their little world? So, um, my oldest yeah. Kevin, he just turned eighteen last okay. Friday. Um, he is just focused on school. So he, okay. ever since he was seven years old, he did, made the decision he wants to be an engineer. He loves robotics. Wow. And he just has that mechanical mind, right? Yeah. Um, so he's gra- going to graduate high school um, next year and wants to go to MIT. Okay. So he has some, like, really big aspirations in terms of, like, yeah. career goals. So he's just been focused on school. That's and amazing. we're just embracing that. It's like, yeah. just focus on school. Um, hopefully, if things go as planned, he'll graduate with his AA okay. out of high school. That's amazing. Who's a disciplinary in the home? Well, uh, wait, wait. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let me think about that. Let me think about that. So when it comes to education, yeah, I'm yeah. all over it. Like, okay. But okay. when it comes to like, you know. Putting the hammer down. That's, no, that's, that's dad. That's dad. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All but right. education, I'm, I'm like really tough. Yeah. But that is also, my husband is the type that he is the fun guy. He's yeah. the fun parent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, people always say like, how do you handle your boys when you find out they're now stalking the girls? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you prepare me for that question. <laughs> so define stalking. <laughs> so they got some girls that really like them and want to hang out. Um, you know, I haven't really experienced that. Maybe what? Kevin hasn't. Okay. So the school that he goes to, I'm sorry, Kevin, I'm just going to give my opinion here. <laughs> um, he, he claims there's not a lot of attractive young ladies. Oh. So it's like a little preppy No school. one will grab his Even attention yet. Public, yeah. Well, he had a girlfriend last year, but yeah, he's okay. like, there's not, there's slim pickings. Slim pickings. <laughs> Never good when it's slim pickings. <laughs> uh, but when we go out, you yeah. know, he gets attention. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't, uh, unless he's just playing coy with me. I don't know. Yeah. But he doesn't seem to like realize it. I see. I see. He's like, like my husband's like that. Yeah. Even though we're married, especially yeah. early on, girls would make passes at my husband right in front of me. Okay. Right? And I'm like, did you see what she did? She yeah. winked at you. He's like, she did. Yeah. I'm like, wait, you didn't oh. see that? Like, what's wrong with you? Come on. He's he's playing that. I didn't see it. <laughs> That's hilarious. So I think my son, my yeah. oldest, is is that type. He's that type. Yeah, huh? where he doesn't see the, he's not reading the room. I see. Whereas I see. Elijah, he's only seven. Yeah. And he's already like, oh, she's pretty. Yeah. I'm he's like, all over hair. it. Yeah. Like, okay, you're seven. Yeah. Pipe down. Yeah. <laughs> Pipe down, buddy. <laughs> He's ready to go. Yeah. Ready to go at it. What's your favorite sport? Favorite sport. As growing up, I loved basketball. Okay. But now, I don't really have a favorite. Okay. Um, wherever... So um, I I enjoyed tennis okay. just recently because Coco, okay. you know, she I Coco doing it. Yeah, Coco is doing it, people. Yes, yes, yes. So wow. I'm enjoying tennis. Okay. Um, starting to like golf a little bit. Oh, there you go. A little but, bit of golf. Yeah, and then watch football. Okay. As de- by default, because my husband's watching. Yeah. But I'm gonna start watching. I think I'm gonna start watching college football oh, because of Prime. Prime, and it came out and just. Lit everybody up. It's a beautiful thing. We're excited about you, Prime. Um, as far as the go-to music go, what is your go-to music? R and B, like old uh, school R and B. Would you would you like a uh, uh, Mary J or you go all the way to the the pop himself, the the big man, MJ? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the whole like yeah, I'll just listen to anything within. You know R and B, and then like if I'm having a stressful moment, classical music. Ooh, yeah, it calms me. It, it brings what? me peace. How far back do you go? I just say Alexa, play classical, t- like the top classical. Okay. Songs. I mean, I don't have, I don't yeah. know them by name and all right, that, but right. that's even when I gave birth to to, to Elijah. Yeah. That was a C section. Then the surgeon says, "Okay, what music do you want to listen to?" Oh. Beyonce. I was yeah. like. Classical. Classical. And they were like, what station? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. But it just 
calms me, brings I, me peace. I like that. Now you say in the R and B world, who's your favorite R and B artist? Mm. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. There's so many. Yeah. I mean, I can listen to Michael Jackson, like any of his um, albums, and recite them, right? You, so I good. enjoy it. But I also adore Prince. There you go. Prince, I mean, his music comes on and gives me chills. Like, yeah. I'm ready. I'm like singing. Yeah. And the whole thing, yeah. He was different. He was different. He was, sure. like, a, he was like a Michael Jackson pro, I don't know, maybe yeah. apprentice or whatever yeah. it is, you know. But um, that's beautiful. So now what can individuals expect from you moving forward, knowing now that you have a product out that you want to get into the hands of as many people as possible? What, what's the plan? Yeah, so I have yet to say the name of the product. It's, it's called uh, Two Style Mo. Ooh. T O Style without the E. Okay. M O U. Okay. So that's Greek. Um, in English, it's Two Style Me. So okay. it's a platform that allows you to get feedback uh-huh. on your style. Oh, wow. So if you were trying to figure out which outfit to wear for a special occasion, yeah. you go to. The, to our site to Salmo and upload some pictures and the community will help you rate and rank which one to pick. Man, isn't that dope? <laughs> Me coming out in my baby blue, like what you guys think. <laughs> right, right. So if you're trying to, you know, decide what you want to, what fit you want to wear yeah. for your next event. Uh, I mean, you're okay. stylish, right? Well, yeah. You know, yeah, you're you know. stylish. So um, there's two types of users on that, yes. right? There's the people that need that that need feedback, and right. there's the people that give feedback. So you're right. already stylish. So right. You should be using the app helping people out. This is true. This is you know? true. This That's, is true. Yeah. I'm getting on it, people. <laughs> I'm going to be very active after today. It's going to be a beautiful thing. But be kind. Yes. Well, you know, I think because I've, I've, I'm have i running around so much, because I even, my my manager reached out to me yesterday. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, you haven't posted anything. Because I, so I kind of keep, my login information very close now. Mm. I keep getting attacked. People keep really? trying to hack my account and all these things. You know, I used to have a, a manager that managed my, my social media account, and then under their management, I got hacked. And I'm like, mm. uh, you guys are killing me. But we're working through it. Mm. So with where you're heading right now, what's the support look like from the family? Um, the support is good. Um, it's fine. Yeah, it's good. They're there. Yes. <laughs> this is good. We're going to go with that, yes. I like that. I like that. The family is behind her with um, with all she's doing, and I need you guys to get behind what she's doing. So with that being said, because, you know, we've created multiple stories. You guys are welcome. <laughs> um, where can they find you? Yeah, so... Um, you could find me on all social media platforms. My name is Erica Agutis, Erica McIntosh Agutis. Um, okay. And then my company is across all platforms as well. Okay. Stalmo, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We have accounts on all the social media platforms. But I would love for you to download the app. Yeah. It's in the App Store as well as um, the Android Store. Okay. So, yeah, you can download it anytime. Um, in the future, in the next month or so, we're going to launch the website version. Oh, nice. There yeah. you go, people. Yeah, yeah. This is this is beautiful. A woman making moves right here. Big moves. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Miss Erica, we want to thank you for being on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. I hope that I make the top five list. Uh, I, he won. I checked the list. <laughs> And there's no women on the list, so I'm calling all the women. Well, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Blue Notice, Blue Notice is not too far off right now. I think she's about six. It's about six downloads for making the... Okay, so Blue Note, we got to make this happen. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to get some women on the board. There you go. Got to get some women on the board. That's, you guys got to take down my dude, Bernard. He is, oh, he is leading by a mile, people. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. There you go. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. You might see this and be like, what you talking about, buddy? But um, for all you guys, uh, listen, we're really excited and we're excited for what you're doing out here, doing something different, you know, and that's what we need right now. A lot of us need different. So I'm proud of you. Oh, well, thank you. 
We got to give you flowers. Aww. Give her flowers, people. Aww, nice. Listen, and thank you for being on the show. Until our next episode of Stories to Create podcast, right here at ES Club, where we have another amazing guest that's doing big things. And I'm telling you, season three is jam-packed, people. I'm excited. Until then. Well, there you have it. The host came, the guest came, and the story was created. Thank you to our sponsors, EHAS Inc., Karis Capital, and the Cornell Bunting LLC brand. Go check out the books, courses, and materials at www.cornellbunting.com. Thank you again for listening to the show. Check back again to hear another tale from another unique guest right here at EHAS Club.